Hello and welcome back. I am Mrs. D and will be filling in for my husband today. You have made it to day 11 and it is now time for some super duper critical thinking. Today's problems are from the amazing website Open Middle. You can find a link to that website in the description below. Take some time and browse some of the beautiful problems they have made available. And let's get started on the fun stuff. All right. Again, thank you, Open Middle, for these problems. These are amazing problems. Um, I love these problems. They're like little puzzles that you got to figure out. They hurt your brain a little bit. Um, so let's see if we can try these problems, see if we can solve these problems. All right, so let's factor this first problem. Um, first thing I notice when I look at this is that there's a positive here and there's a positive there. So what does that mean? So when I see a positive in both spots, that means I know that my signs are going to be a plus and a plus. So I have those already. All right, the next thing is I see an x squared here. So that means that this is going to be x times x. All right, moving along quite quickly. This one's not too bad. We have a positive 4 here. So we know the factors of 4 are going to be 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So now, um, that means we can have, we actually have two different answers that we could have here. So let me just duplicate this real quick. And because I'm going to need another one of these. Perfect. So now. I'm going to use the first one. We'll use the 1 and the 4. So we have one answer with the 1 and a 4. And then we're going to have another one with a 2 and a 2. Perfect. All right, so that's beautiful and all. But we still don't know what those values are for the middle term. So we still don't know what this is. We've got to figure out what that is. So let's figure out what that is real quick. Um, well, when I multiply here and here, I get 1x. When I multiply this with this, I get... 4x. So when I add those up, then I'm going to get a 5x. So we know that this term in here, I'm going to write it over here, can either be a 5, or let's look at the next one. We have 2x and 2x, so that gives me a 4x. So that means it could be either a 5 or a 4. Game over. Not too bad. This problem was a fun one. Nice little easy one. Uh, but I know they're going to get harder as we go along. All right, go ahead, try number two on your own. Problem number two a try now. Um, again, remember, make sure you're pausing the video and, get, and attempting these problems on your own. Don't just wait for me to do them, because again, the fun is when you get to do them. But just in case you got stuck, I'll go over this one with you. Um, same thing, let's try to factor this bad boy. There we go. Let's take a look at our signs. What do we notice? I noticed that this is negative. So as soon as that, I know that's negative, I know I'll have a positive and a negative as my signs. All right, let's get going. Well, this makes it easy. X squared is just X times X. Beautiful. All right. Negative 12. 12 is going to give me 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Beautiful. So now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking now I have... Actually, I have three choices this time. So guess what? I love this little app. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to have three of these, guys. Let's do that again. And give me another one over here. So I'm going to have three, three factors. All right. So let me see. I'll use the first one, the 12 and the 1. Now, remember, our middle term here, the B term, has a positive sign. So that means when you pick these numbers, you got a one and a 12. I would put the 12 as positive, so it's larger than the negative value. So let's check that real quick. So when I multiply these together, that'll give me a 12x. And when I multiply these ones together, that'll give me a negative one x. And then the sum of that is 11. So guess what? For this answer, one answer could be 11. That could be one of your answers. Let's take a look at the next one. Let's try the 6 and the 2 now. So the 6, I would make that one the positive value, and the 2 the negative value. And just check that out. This gives you a 6x. This one a negative 2. 
x, so the total is a 4. So one answer could be negative 11, or it could be a 4. So that would give you 4x. And let's do the last one. Not that bad. Uh, which one? 4 and 3. Let's make the 4 the positive and the 3 the negative. And what do we get? Got a 4x. And I got a negative 3x. And the total of that would be positive 1. So, or 1. So, what numbers could have been in this little spot right here? Could have been 11, could have been a 4, could have been a 1. All right, go ahead. Try 3 on your own. Make sure you're pausing the video and giving that a shot. Problem 3 is already looking pretty intense um, because of that 3 value. And then 8 has multiple factors. This one just looks like it's going to carry our butt. So let's give this a shot. Um, again, first thing we should notice is what does this positive tell you right there? That positive tells me my signs will be positive and positive. And especially because this one's a plus, so that means they're gonna have, our signs we know are gonna have to be a plus and a plus. Perfect. All right, so let's go get to work. So let's factor this. This would give us a three x and a one x. All right, that's perfect so far. Not too bad. And then let's take a look over here at this eight. So I'm gonna write eight up here. Eight is 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Okay, that's not too bad. But now we have some issues here. Where are we going to place these? Like if I use the 1 and the 8, the 1 and the 8, you know what that means? That means we are going to be able to do this problem how many times? We're going to be able to do this problem four times. There's going to be four sets of answers. Uh, let's go ahead and show you this. So we have this one. We're going to have... Let's do this one again over here and this one again over here. Okay. So what I mean by four sets of answers, that means, so for problem number one, we can have a one and an eight or we can switch around and have eight and one. That would both be valid answers. Uh, Let's take a look and let's check those. So what does this one give me? This one gives me a 1x when you multiply, and this one gives me a 24x. So that means one of my answers for this little term in here can be uh, 25. So that could be one of my answers. Or let's take a look at this one over here. This would give me an 8x. And this would give me a 3x. That means my other answer could be 11. So I get 25 or 11. And now let's try the same thing. Now this time with the 2 and the 4. Um, it could be 2 and 4. Or it could be 4 and 2. And again, when we multiply these out, you'll see those are different values. So this one gives me a 2x. And this one gives me a 12x. What a beautiful problem. Let's do this one real quick. A 4x. And this one is a 6x. So that means my two answers for the first, for this third one, would have been a 14. Oh. 14. Or my last answer is 10. I'm going to write it right here. 10. So I have four different answers. This number, this middle term right here, the one that's missing, this term right here, could have been a 25, 11, 14, or 10. What a be that's a beautiful problem. If that doesn't look beautiful to you, uh, I don't know what you're looking at, because to me it does. Good luck. All right, you're on number four. Number four is a beauty too. Um, so good luck, give it a shot, pause the video, and then give number four a try. All right, this problem does, it looks like a beast. Um, it looks like it's gonna be pretty challenging. Um, first of all, there's boxes everywhere and I'm trying to make this equation true. Um, I know if you have just the paper version of this, then I would just draw this again. I would actually write this down. 
Um, but I'm going to place this right underneath here to make my life a lot easier. So now it's underneath, it's directly underneath so I can see what's going on. All right, perfect. So what am I going to start off with here? Um, well, let's take a look. First thing I notice is I see right here, this is a negative 15. So that means that my signs are going to be plus and minus. And we already have a plus and minus in the prom. So that's that looks pretty good so far. All right, the next choice I'm going to start with is what do we do next usually is let's think about all the factors of 12. Now 12, that's not a friendly number because 12 is going to be 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Now we have different choices. So for every one of these choices, it might be one of those numbers. It might be the 12 here and the 1 here, or it might be the 2 and then the 6. Um, so... I would probably stop right now before I continue and see if I can look for anything else because right now, otherwise I'll just be guessing and checking. I'll be plugging a lot of work and doing a lot of work. So instead of doing that, let's take a look at this last term. What do we get here? So I got a 15. Hmm. 15 is one times 15. It's also three times five. And now this is beautiful. Why is this beautiful? I have 3 times 5. Well, what do I already notice here? I already see a 3. Well, that tells me that them, just by using logic that this other number must be the 5. And bam, now we have one of the boxes. All right, so now. So now I'm like, one box is done. Let's keep working. Now my other choice is now <laughs> is to just to go back and actually it looks like I can plug in any numbers for this box and this box because when we do that we'll finally get the answer for this box so um, now let's just try each one so let's try the first one um, a 12 and a 1 so I'm going to place a 12 here and see what happens I'll place the 1 here and see what happens so let's check this really quick this is going to give me um, negative 3x and the other one's going to give me 60x. So that's a total of 57x. But the problem is we're not allowed to use a positive 57. So I wouldn't be able to plug in 57 right now because this is negative. It should have been a negative. So that means we can't do the problem that way. So let me just go back a little bit. So if I can't do those problems... Let's rewind all the way back. Maybe instead of 12 and 1, how about we switch it around the other way? So we put the 1 here and the 12 here. And let's see if that makes a difference. So as I'm going through this one, this one's going to give me negative 3 times 12 is negative 36x. Beautiful. And then this one is 5x. So now... My answer is negative 31x. Beautiful. So guess what? Now we do know what this term is. This is a 31. There's already a negative side bound up front. So the answer we're looking for for this problem is 31. But I guarantee you that's just one answer. I believe there's three answers. So we have one answer is... Um, one answer is 31. I no, there's going to be two other answers because we have we have two other values that we haven't used yet. We haven't used this one, the 2 times 6, and we haven't used the 3 times the 4. All right, I'm not going to complete those for you. Those are the same process that we just did for this one. Go ahead and find the other two answers. Find what other values we can use for these ones. Um, and then you'll, then you'll have one, I believe one more after this one. 